Hi, you're listening to The Sociology Show, a podcast about absolutely anything to do with the wonderful world of sociology. Whether you're a teacher, a lecturer, a student, or just taking a passing interest, this podcast will look at a range of issues from social class, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, religion, crime, education, and anything else that sociology has to offer. My name is Matthew Wilkin, and each episode I will speak to someone working in the field of sociology and let them explain all about their own interests, their research, and their experiences. So, put your earphones in, turn the volume up, and let's be sociology geeks together, eh? Hi, thank you very much for coming on to the Sociology Show podcast. Do you want to start by telling us who you are and what you do, please? Well, thank you. My name is Mark Brooks and I'm a senior policy and communications advisor in the field of uh, men's well-being. And I wear a number of hats as part of that. So, for example, I'm a national ambassador for International Men's Day. I'm a chair of uh, the Mankind Initiative Domestic Abuse Charity, trustee of the Men and Boys Coalition and also a policy advisor on the all-party parliamentary group for issues affecting men and boys but obviously I'm speaking uh, based on my own views uh, rather than necessarily representing those organisations. Thank you Mark, thank you. And so the first question I'm going to ask you is a really obvious one. Lots of people will have heard of International Women's Day, might not be aware of International Men's Day although it is growing in popularity. Um, So how do you answer that question when people say what is it, what's it about? Well is, is very interesting about how it's grown uh, considerably in, in the UK. And probably UK is one of, if not the leading country in the world when it comes to the number of organisations involved. I mean, there's great work in India and in Australia and other parts of the uh, world as well. Um, but it was set up in 1999 in Trinidad and, and Tobago. And since then, it's spread around the world. And myself and a number of colleagues, including uh, Glenn Paul, who who now works in um, Australia, um, picked it up. And um, since 2010, when we first started uh, promoting this, we had about 10 people uh, or 10 organisations come on board. And last year, we had over 400 organisations taking part in some form of activity around International Men's Day. Um, So it's really picking up in the UK and we hope there's even more um, for International Men's Day in 2022. But what what it's primarily about in the UK is centred around three key themes. One of them is around promoting men and boys' well-being and obviously some of the issues that impact negatively on men and boys' well-being. Um, The second area is around promoting the charities and organisations that support men and boys in this field. And also, lastly, promoting a positive conversation around men, masculinity and fatherhood, which we we feel, for many of us involved in in this space, uh, has been lacking, um, but we are finding that those kind of negative portrayals of men are now being actively challenged. It's a very inclusive event, though, because this is a key thing. You know, men and boys are not in competition with women and girls. And, you know, we, we see ourselves as a companion and a collaborator with International Women's Day, uh, which obviously is really popular. And, you know, what we, we see ourselves as, as part of that whole movement around equality and, and inclusion. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Mark, because you, you must meet this as well, that, that there is often a narrative that International Men's Day is the antithesis of the, uh, you know, uh, Women's Day or that it's misogynistic or it's anti-women in some way. And that, that couldn't be further from the truth, could it? Oh, absolutely. Um, And I'll be honest, though, um, I mean, most of those people who say that it's misogynistic and the antithesis of International Women's Day are those people and organisations and academics who don't really want men and boys issues uh, to be discussed um, because, you know, and sadly, a lot of the world that we operate in, and I'm sure that's the same with 
you know, your, your fellow uh, sociologists and, you know, in the academic world, there's too much politics too much gender identity politics in this field whereas you know very inclusive organizations that i'm involved in and obviously my own personal mindset and obviously what international men's day is about is not is is not setting up a competition so Mm. we want women and girls to be looked after and be supported um and we want international women's day to succeed but there is an undercurrent um as I said, a political undercurrent with a small p uh, that actually wants to keep men and boys issues off of the off of the agenda and for them not to be a- addressed. And you know, I'm sure some of that is reflected in uh, the, the curriculum uh, in in a number of university courses. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I, the, when you were saying that, what just came to mind is if if you were to study gender studies, for example, that is almost exclusively about the oppression of women. Um, uh, similarly, you know, when we study gender in sociology, quite often the emphasis is is often looking at, at the, the suffering that women go through, which, of course, is completely and utterly valid. But you're right, there is this sort of missing part of it that's kind of screaming out to me, actually. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and the thing is, I mean, one I mentioned my colleague Glenn Glenn Paul, and you know, he, he framed it so brilliantly many years ago that that, that the narrative is that um, all women have problems, all men are problems, mm. and you know, without wanting to be too controversial, Matthew, and perhaps more of a personal, well, certainly a personal reflection, I think that the you know from from a lot of my wider work is I think that the exclusion of men and boys issues from psychology and sociology curriculum and gender studies is actually deliberate Mm. because if you look at the figures um and one of if you only have to go on the ukmensday.org.uk website um if you if you look at the figures um around you know 13 men take their own life uh every every um every day You've got in in the UK. You've got thirty three men uh, a day die of prostate cancer. Thirty six thousand fewer eighteen year old boys went to university this autumn than uh, girls of the same age. You know, ninety five percent of the people in prison are men. Eighty five percent of the people sleeping rough are men, um, and a whole range of other uh, similar issues, which are broadly based on how society interacts with men and boys and how they see them. And I know there's going to be a, a, a debate forever of, around nature versus nurture, but wherever you sit, these are stark statistics and areas. So if you're a sociologist or, or a psychologist, um, you know, or on gender studies, it's inexplicable why um those sorts of issues aren't actually covered. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at uh, research, that uh, a report that I authored on male suicide uh, for this all-party parliamentary group. And, you know, the lens, if you look at, at suicide, is very much from a mental health perspective, um, but it's um, not from from and it's looking at the the outcomes or, or the symptoms of mouse suicide which obviously is suicide or suicide ideation but it's not looking at the causes which is around um, bereavement relationship breakdown in its broadest sense child contact domestic abuse and also financial uh, problems and work related problems i.e unemployment uh for example um and you know those sorts of things are very real issues so so they should be on curriculum the last point is i suppose is that i come back to this point i've always reflected on we share society together so you know the, the men and the health of men and boys is absolutely crucial to the health i mean physical mental health and and everything in between is absolutely crucial to the well-being and health of women and girls so, you know, I don't understand how curriculums can ignore those issues. Um, the reason they do is deliberate. I mean, because if anyone else can give me an explanation why they're not included, I'm happy to hear it. Mm. Well, in relation to that, 
you may have encountered this as well, Mark, but uh, first of all, if, if I perhaps introduce the idea of International Men's Day, quite often the joke is, isn't every day Men's Day, you know, that's quite often what you hear. Um, or you get the response of what have men got to worry about or what are men concerned about? I find it staggering. You've just you've just done some of the stats that when you reel out some of those statistics, you know, underperforming in education, more likely to be homeless, more likely to take their own life, more likely to die early, that people cannot comprehend that that's an issue, that those that those issues are seen as minor issues in some way. I just find that staggering. I mean, it, from your research, what what's your understanding of, of why that's occurring? In, in in terms of in terms of why they're not interested, I think it's because of this narrative, uh, like I mentioned, that you know all women have problems and all men are problems, um, and I, I think it is. I think it is political. There is a movement in in there is a movement by certain people that they just don't want to address issues. I mean, we've seen a report actually just come out on, on the kind of. Um, on the UK and it's called, you know, the issues around boys and, you know, launched by uh, Global Boys Initiative and, um, and other, other Equimondo and others. And, you know, it's about the state of boys today, but the report barely mentions boys' education underachievement um, and even comes up with claims about lots of money going into, you know, men's rights movements, which... Um, you know, we've asked, um, actually, well, what do they mean by men's rights movements? So you've got these kind of, you've got these kind of, all, you know, things where basically everything is clear in plain sight, but people do not want to actually talk about it. And we even saw some years ago where the British Psychology um, Society actually, uh, there were some academics who wanted to set up a um, men's section, which thankfully is there and is very good and led by a very brilliant female academic Elizabeth Bates. But there, there was like there was like um, an, a large number of psychologists actually opposed um, a whole psychology section on men's issues, and I, I find I find it strange. I think it's deliberate. I think uh, there's a political movement. Um, I don't know what name to give that, but just does not want to to talk about men and boys issues even though you know men you know boys have mothers you know they have sisters have partners um we share work together etc and um i don't understand it if you could get any any of those people who who say well these aren't issues in a room that would be interesting to hear their views the last point really is this kind of misnomer around where men are in society so there are some men but a minority of men who have got a huge amount of power and money uh, and therefore it's kind of like well look at all these men at the top but also you have to take a more inclusive and um, diverse view of the world a real 360 degree view of the world and you think well look at all these men at the bottom said so, you know 17 out of 20 um, who are rough sleeping and will be men. You've got so many men in prison. Why is that? That's around adverse childhood experiences in the main. And so so the key thing is is that, you know, what? why is it that academics and some organisations want to belittle that? I think the fact that, you know, isn't every day International Men's Day, that was a thing about five years ago, maybe longer, but actually, no one really says that very much anymore, unless they do it just for, you know, um, just for a joke, if you like. Um, but um, that's not a serious thing anymore. And the majority of people who push back on that uh, have actually been women and girls. So lots of women and girls now, normal members of the public, normal work colleagues, normal academics, normal students and others have said we've had enough of this negativity around uh, men and boys because, you know, I've, I've you know, because they'll be saying, you know, I've got a son who's been in an abusive relationship. I've got a brother who, who thought about taking his own life. You know, I've, I've got, you know, a, a male work colleague who, who's, you know, dying of prostate cancer. Those types of 
memes and tropes are not funny anymore. I'm delighted to hear that. And it, and it does sound like progress is being made, which is absolutely fan- fantastic. Um, I've got a couple of theories to run by you because I asked I ask my classes, okay? I asked my classes why, why they thought that was often the response, the, the negative response. Um, one student said, it's, uh, trying to stand up for men's issues is a bit like saying white lives matter rather than black lives matter, you know, that it's shrouded in controversy and actually it's taking away the limelight from the group which has less privilege. Um, so that, that was one theory. So maybe I, I'll be interested to see what you think about that. Uh, another theory which came from a male student was he, he quoted uh, William Collins, who wrote the book The Empathy Gap, and he said when it comes to suffering, um, that, that society does seem to have less empathy for men. You know, if you see a woman who's uh, on the street, if she's homeless, that people are more likely to stop and help that woman give her money and, and get her back on her feet. Whereas when there's men slumped in doorways, we just kind of walk past or, or look the other way. And perhaps similar is happening in education at the moment where, where boys are failing and there, there is sort of a, a lack of empathy to it. Um, just a couple of theories, uh, Mark. I wonder what you thought about those two. Well, I, I agree with both. I mean, I mean, um, and I, I could give some, you know, illumination on that. And certainly Williams Collins' book around the empathy gap, uh, certainly that is there. I mean, the work um, that I do with the domestic abuse charity, um, there's a video we did, I think, eight, eight years ago that still gets loads of hits called um, Hashtag Violence is Violence. And I would recommend anyone go on Google to have a look at that. It's only a, a two-minute clip where it basically shows uh, a, a depiction in the street where a man uh, is attacking a woman and lots of people go to her aid, rightly. Um, and the two people doing the attacking are, are actors. So it's staged and it's locked off cameras. And then about an hour later, they did exactly the same. The, the film company we work with or digital brand agency we work with did exactly the same scenario but reverse agenda so you've got the woman attacking the man and basically no one not only no one helped but actually people were laughing and you know let's still if you as said violence is what hashtag violence is violence you see that and you saw that in broad you know broad daylight a real depiction so there is an empathy gap um we with regard to um, men and boys and again not on an individual level not uh, individual um friends and family and work colleagues but structurally and politically there is an empathy gap and there is a view and there's been some work on it with local magistrates actually that there's a view that men and boys can bear more harm and risk than women and girls in similar situations. So there's a real cognitive bias there. Um, the, the whole issue about um, uh, privilege is, is very binary because privilege is not about gender or um, or sex um, or ethnicity on its own. It's a whole cocktail of those protected characteristics, but also importantly around class and also about place as well. Because the point I, I've said um, in the lecture, actually, I gave, gave about five, six years ago, was the fact that, you know, there's been a big push to get more women onto the boards of FTSE 100 co- companies, which is right and proper. Mm-hmm. So no criticism of that. But the, the kind of argument has been, um, and I'd made the argument, is that if you're a, a black working class boy from a council estate in Peckham, you're not telling me, um, who goes to a, 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 you know, an Ofsted grade four school, you're not telling me that he's got more chance of becoming a member of uh, a FTSE 100 board than a woman who went to Rodine, Oxbridge, and has got a, f- a dad who's a stockbroker and a mother who's a barrister. Um, but the narrative is, is that the boy from the council estate actually has more opportunity and is more privileged, and it's just not true. So the whole issue around privilege has been far too binary, and I'm hoping that we're actually... I'm moving beyond that. And certainly I've seen that in the last two years where class and place have been become really to the fore and looking at all of these particular issues 
A, on an individual basis, because every individual's got a range of protected characteristics and their class and place, but also um, obviously looking at it from that very intersectional lens. So again, you know, I'm, you know, men aren't privileged um, and women aren't privileged. Some men are privileged and some women are privileged, but they're not privileged as a whole group because you lose the granularity which impacts on individuals' lives. The Sociology Show podcast relies on the kind contributions of sponsorship and donations. If you enjoy the show, then you can help with the hosting costs by donating as little as £5 on the GoFundMe page. Simply visit uk.gofundme.com and search for The Sociology Show. If you can donate, then you will be sent a Sociology Show pen as a small thank you for your continued support of the show. I'm going to take a slightly more negative approach on one thing, actually, because first of all, I'm really delighted to hear that you think that the cogs are in motion for change and there's a lot more pe- people getting on board. Something I've noticed with the, with some of the feminist movement is um, that there does seem to be a certain section of the feminist movement, and I'm not going to say all because it's far from that, but a certain mm-hmm. section of the feminist movement, which seems to have swung back to nothing more than misandry and man-hating, if I'm being perfectly honest, if I was put my cards on the table and say say what it is. And there seems to be a, a divide, a fraction within, within the feminist movement that you've got many feminists that are on board with this and feel that it's supportive and International Men's Day and International Women's Day need to sit side by side and both be recognised. But th- there is a definite movement among some that is, is purely anti-men, if I'm putting it honestly, Mark. Well, 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 anything like that, you know, whether you're anti-women or anti-men, it is a concern. And you know, I don't, I don't, I don't un- un- understand, I don't understand the philosophy behind it, um, because, as I said, we, we share society together. And um, th- I mean, the the issue, of course, is whether those you describe have the power and the influence over the media and 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 in other. In other fields to 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 have a far bigger impact than a they deserve and b they don't represent normal women uh in society and and you know that's and and that's always been the issue is that then that you know th- those who are um try and minimize issues around men it's where it's how much power or influence they have and you know, I, I, you know, my, my concern is, is so things are getting better. I still think that they, they, they you know, some, some of those people who try and block issues around men and boys have too much power. I mean, it's inexplicable, for example, that we, we have a women's health strategy, which is brilliant and we need one, but we don't have a men's health strategy. And it's not that organisations haven't asked for it or made the case, but we still haven't got one of those you know i talk about boys education under achievement and you know the lack of boys going not just to university but they're behind girls at every sector but also they're not entering health and education and and, um and uh those types of occupations but but there's no schemes there to to deal with that. And probably the starkest issue is that you know all boys and men who are victims of sexual abuse or sexual violence, domestic abuse, stalking, even forced marriage and so-called honour-based violence, they're all called vi- victims of violence against women and girls. Mm. Government, if you are a boy who is sexually abused, you are described officially by the government as a victim of violence against a girl. Um, you know, every man who was a victim of Reynard Sinegar, the, the serial rapist in Manchester, is classed by the government as a victim of violence against a woman. So while there's, there is movement, there are still some big political boulders which are getting in the way of actually proper support for, and recognition of men and boys' well-being issues. Mm. I have been doing a lot of reading on that myself as well. I, I wondered, Mark, is there a, a fear, and I mentioned this in an interview that I had the other day, that if a discussion in Parliament, in government, or even in academia comes up about gender inequality, and a person raises their hand and says, what about men? That That is quite often silenced, shut out, or 
seem to be taking over, you know, mansplaining, that sort of thing. I, I think there's a, a genuine fear of people raising or wanting to raise men's issues for fear that they think that it it's taking away from women or trying to, to be domineering in some way. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it always depends on the context. Mm. You know, if you're telling, if you're running a debate about uh, female victims of sexual violence, for example, then it, it, you know, you shouldn't be raising issues about yeah them, uh, about you know men, you know, because you, you do start getting into the what's about mm. I, mean, I mean, the issue is 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 when you're having general discussions about sexual violence or domestic abuse or education and uh, women and men who want to raise issues about boys and men feel 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 unable to but i, I think again you know we, we we just need people to be brave and to start asking those questions and also doing so in in a in a reasonable in a reasonable way um and so we we, we still have these political issues that that we want to get past but i come back to you know as i said i wear many hats so i'm probably speaking on it from a combination of those i come back to my international men's day hat which is you know one of the key things about international men's day is that it's a really positive event uh a positive two weeks because of lots of events in the week before lots of events in the week after so and and you know so many people get behind it so i think the key issue is that keep pushing on about men and boys well-being we're seeing a big increase in the number of charities grassroots charities which are being created um to to help men often by men only have to look at a huge growth in organizations like handy man's clubs and uk men's sheds to actually see see that visibly um so the key thing is 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 about you know if we live in a really equal and inclusive society international men's day is part of that the public think it's part of that employers do so blue chip companies multinationals down to you know local community groups local pubs doing fundraisers for prostate cancer and you know a local I was looking at one last night a car car insurance company doing a big bake off to raise money for a local male suicide charity so all of these organizations large and small and the public whether uh, whatever background are really getting behind international men's day because it does show that normal members of the public and organisations do care about the well-being of men and boys. And that effectively is what International Men's Day is all about. Fantastic. Really, really good to hear. And you you just mentioned it's, it's over two weeks, but there is a specific date for International Men's Day, is there? Yeah, that's right. So the specific date is the 19th of November, which is a Saturday. And what tends to happen is that, um, especially if it's the weekend, but organisations you know, fitting in with work calendars will and others will hold events in the week before and the week after. So effectively it becomes it's almost like a two two week week event. And, you know, just thinking about kind of sociology, for example, and you know, the, dipping into kind of psychology as well, is the fact that um w- when I'm creating some of the new content, including some of the new uh, we've got an events calendar on our website as well. And so, you know, I would certainly encourage anyone to dip into those events. Some of them are online, some of them are obviously physical. But, um, you know, nothing seems to happen until about six weeks before. Uh, and, and whether people say, oh, it's International Men's Day, we better put something together and there's a mad rush. And I always think about um, my, my time at school where boys didn't do any studying until a month <laughs> before the exams. <laughs> and I think International Men's Day has certainly a bit, a bit of that, a bit of a bit of that about it. <laughs> and you just, you just mentioned it, the website, Mark, if people want to find out more, um, what, where do they go on the web? Uh, which website do they go to? And you've also got a, a Twitter handle as well. Yeah, so so it's basically the, the the website is uh, ukmensday.org.uk, and the uh, Twitter is at ukmensday. And throughout the period, please use the hashtag 
whatever social media you use, hashtag International Men's Day. I would really encourage everybody listening to to go on the website, have a look at the events page, uh, look at how you can also get involved, but also, you know, go on Eventbrite, go on social media and obviously, you know, Google, etc. And just type in International Men's Day UK and have a look at all the events going on. And, you know, please do get involved in those. Lots of great academic events run by universities talking about a range of these issues through to, as I said, lots of fundraisers and other types of uh, activities. So please please do get involved um, in, in those events. You obviously don't need to create them but do get involved and support those which are already happening great uh, thank you very much mark um thank you very much for your time today as well absolute pleasure thank you the sociology show podcast relies on the kind contributions of sponsorship and donations if you enjoy the show then you can help with the hosting costs by donating as little as five pounds on the gofundme page simply visit uk.gofundme.com and search for The Sociology Show. If you can donate, then you will be sent a Sociology Show pen as a small thank you for your continued support of the show. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the podcast. If you would like to contact the show or be interviewed, then please email the Sociology Show podcast at gmail.com.